what is up you guys welcome back to my channel uh, I'm gonna be vlogging a little bit today I have a bunch to do um, yesterday before my sister arrived I decided to go ahead and start drafting a belt for some strange reason I I remember why I wanted to wear that new purple dress I got from best Taylor on Etsy but I feel like it's just too big you know so I want to create a nice belt um, to go ahead and go with a lot of different things actually and you know I'm just kind of hanging out in just a t-shirt you know as you do in the morning so let me go ahead and give you a little look at uh, constructing this I mean it's just a belt that's it <laughs> Makes a funny sounds because okay it's like this let me hold it up so that you can see the shape it's kind of like a waist cincher type of shape and I'm I am planning to reinforce this because it's just like it's linen and it does have a good bit of stretch if I would have cut it the other way but that's not how I want it to fit I want it to create a nice curve in this space so where's the pattern piece I cut Fuck. so my idea is here is the pattern piece I went ahead and made this belt a little bit shorter of a strap but I wanted it to be like the master pattern if I were to make this for someone else I would make it that long so I have like a yellow zone this is how I've been making patterns myself and I understand what it means but I don't know if anyone else would so I have this like zone in here that's like meant to indicate an insert of another fabric so it says cut to on fold which I just did so I have my you know inside and outside like so that this could be flipped around and it's going to look the same from both sides. But this yellow part in the middle, I need to cut out of like a really strong, tight woven fabric. Um, I think for this I might use broadcloth instead of cutting into my cotille. But it could be a waist cincher type thing and make it out of cotille. But if I were to do that, I might need to make like... I don't know if I would need to make specific pattern pieces or if just this shit. I don't know if that's even showing up on the camera. I'm going to trace this onto a different piece of paper because I wouldn't be able to use this to cut out the fabric anyway. It's just like, so my mind knows. Super satisfying. Oh my God, really? Like, yeah. That's...
to lay the cotille on the piece of linen that I cut and kind of match up based on the original pattern piece I have here where, sorry about that, oh, scissor cup in the way. So I'm going to match up using this guide. There's plenty of ways I could make that um, in a pretty way. So I'm just going to like really fuss over this for a moment and make absolutely sure I have the cotille where I want it to be. And then what I'm going to do is stitch it down all the way around. So that way um, you will see a little bit of stitching on the outside. Um, so that, I mean, that could be done with um, a contrasting thread if I wanted to, like a, I think it would look really beautiful with this off-white color, like almost the color of the cotille. In fact, the cotille could even be on the outside as a piece, a fashion piece. So there's a lot of ways that I could make this belt over in different ways and stuff, adding embroidery and stuff. But since I'm planning on making this specifically to go with that purple dress, I'm going to put the cotille inside and it'll be like this sunk in there. You won't see it, but I do want to use this purple thread and it's variegated. So as I sew with it, it will um, kind of get lighter and darker, but for my bobbin, I'll use black. So that way, um, if I want it to be all black, all I have to do is flip the belt over. Oh, I love that. Since the cotille will only be stitched to one piece of the linen, I'm going to go ahead and use that as an opportunity to create more of the purple stitching. So I'll make sure that I sew the purple from the outside. So that means I need to make a bobbin with this color thread and use black on top because there's no way I'm going to sew this edge from this side. <laughs> I can also use a decorative stitch, so I'm going to look this over and see what I want to do. Fucking dead. Really I've never seen this happen before. It's literally. <laughs> Thank you. I 
I love watching this. Okay, hold up. I gotta show you closer. And so since for this part I want black thread to be coming from the needle and put the black on top and then I think I'm ready to sew my couture. Yeah, I, I literally don't know how that happened. Bye. Okay, I gotta show you guys. I got this presser foot set. It is absolutely fabulous. It's like literally changed my whole sewing game, but it's Madame Sew's ultimate presser foot set. It's 32 pieces, but the packaging was a little funky. It came with all of these amazing graphs, but they were laid out in a way that I had to like unfold things to look at it every time. So I went ahead and like glued the cover and the thing together and cut out the little notches on top so that it fits right in here and stays. And I did have a piece of, there's like a double stick tape there. Just kind of, there it goes, press it down a little more. But it's really great that now I can have it open like this and look down and see exactly what it is. And the little book tells me how to do it. I just love this set. I can't recommend it more. The price is incredible. And the quality of each foot that I've tried so far, I've tried like mm, five or six of them. They've all been wonderful. Like look at these pin tucks. I was just testing them, testing the the nine groove pin tuck foot and there's a five groove one for like thicker fabrics too but isn't that gorgeous ah! Is exactly what I wanted. So, ah, uh, it feels really nice. And now that they're well attached, I don't have all of that weird puckering when I pull it. This is fantastic. I'm so happy, so proud. <laughs> so I'm super happy with how this is turning out. 
and um, I've sewn, I mean, not sewn, <laughs> I've pressed inwards my seam allowance and pinned that down. And I'm just kind of like looking at this cotille on the inside and decided I want a couple channels of reinforcement stitching to kind of like go down my back. I think that would be really pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and sew those with a different decorative stitch that looks like a leaf. And I'm just going to follow the red line that I drew here. Being very careful to make sure everything is like in line where I want it to be. I went a little off track there, but I mean, you can't really tell I made a mistake from the other side. So what I'm gonna do is really try and copy, um, if you can see, if I hold it up a little closer, you can see where I made my mistake. If I can try and copy that mistake, <laughs> that would be great. So what I'm gonna do is draw another line next to this one to mimic my center line of my stitch here, which I don't know, it was the way the needle went down, it was easier to follow it on the edge of the decorative stitch rather than trying to follow it to the middle. And once I saw where it was going, there was no way I was gonna like correct it and that, that would have made it look really bad from this side. So I think that looks really awesome. And I'm just gonna try and copy the angle. Okay. Yeah, I think this little element really, oh gosh, it's so pretty. <laughs> oh. Okay, I really love that. I really, really love that. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be the back of the belt. And yeah, that added the reinforcement I needed. And I was able to follow that blue line exactly. So I am absolutely positive I got these angles right. I did screw up a little tad bit with the stitch length at the beginning because I reset my stitch, but that's totally fine. No one's gonna know but me, bitch. It's fine. So from now on, I go ahead and start sewing these very, very, very fiddly linen-only straps. If you've ever sewed linen before, you you might know it's it wants to move all over the place. It wants to really start puckering up right under the foot. So the next time I sew with my linen, which I absolutely love, and I have a lot more of this black linen, and I have a whole bunch of like off-white, a natural undyed as well, I'm going to choose... A different presser foot because I had such a hard time getting through this portion of the construction. I'd say everything else was a breeze compared to this because it was just so lofty. Like everything that you like about wearing linen, you hate about sewing it. <laughs> so that kind of is something that I, sh I should have known ahead of time and used my rolling presser foot, but I didn't. I didn't. I like, I couldn't even speak at the time, but... I was just trying to use my two finger widths ahead of the presser foot to like keep that bitch in place and it was working to a certain degree and then kind of bleeding it with my my middle finger behind the presser foot which is very precarious and, and sometimes frightening uh, place to be in. 
So here is the finished belt. And I do want to make some alterations to the pattern. To If I'm going to make it this wide, I need to kind of actually cut pattern pieces in the way that I sewed these or in the way that I did the decorative stitching with the cotille. So I am pretty happy with this though. I really like how the purple stitching looks and it kind of goes all different ways. It can go front, back, um, you know, back and forth with just the black and uh, I think it's pretty nice. I tried it with the purple dress that I intended on making it for and I didn't like how it looked because it was too thick on thick and I'm still going to get dress clips for that dress because I think this whole belt situation really messed with the front line of the dress which I think is really pretty. So yeah, yeah let me give you a better look. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, look at me making my uh, first accessory, uh, this belt that I think ended up a little too wide, but yeah, take care.